Hello, hello, hello. So it is time for part dose of our little instructional course, I guess. Um, so this is focusing on post-production of um, pretty much what we showed you last time. Once we get done recording a, uh, a song or a track, um, then this is what we do to it to make it sound um, better. So I just want to show you some techniques. So the first thing we do um, when we finish a track is we rebalance it. And that means that um, we mess with the levels or the decibel levels to make sure you can hear all the parts. Um, so the song I just recorded is the National Anthem. So I just want to play that for you right now so you can hear where it is. And things are off, so see if you can uh, see what's off. So here's the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. So, I only recorded uh, parts of it so we don't have to listen to the whole thing, but if you can see here, um, we have four different tracks. Um, we have five, but we'll talk about that fifth one later. Um, so these four tracks, uh, this first line right here, you can see the top left, I've labeled it Melody 1, which is the male melody. Um, below that is the bass line, or the bass part. Um, below that is the baritone part, and below that is Melody 2, which is the female um, part, which I just sang it up an octave. So visually, when you first look at these things, um, you can tell that one thing is not like the other. Um, right here, if you can see just visually how big these decibel readings are, um, compared to, uh, let me even zoom in some more so it's even more obvious, um, but this size compared to this size and then compared to the size of this track. So these are obviously way off. Um, so as you can hear, we're getting a lot of this uh, bass part, which I put it on its own. Oh, say can you see? Then if you listen to that together, you can hear almost only that part. Oh, say can you see? Right. So we want to get that to where they're much more equal. So it doesn't mean I want to bring everything up to this bass part because then I'll overload things. So first thing we're going to do is bring that bass part down. And you can do that with this line um, right in the middle. This is a decibel line. See when I move it up and down, it goes minus or plus a decibel which dB. Um, so let's go, let's just take it down 10 decibels and see what happens. Oh, say can you see? So it already sounds a lot better. And I'm not going to take you through the whole balancing process. I'm going to mess with this. But as I'm doing this, what I'm looking at is this line down here. If you see the decibel level. So if I put this track on and it's hitting between negative 30 and negative 21 decibels, that's about right where I want it. So I've now rebalanced everything and put everything between negative 30 and negative 20 decibels with the melody being slightly higher because it is a little bit more important to hear. So this is what it sounds like now. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. So, not perfect, but much better than the option we had at the beginning. So one of the other tricks that we use um, is a process called sound reduction. The reason we do that is because you can't always control your environment. You know, if I'm in a room, sometimes fans are running, or a refrigerator, or Caleb won't stop talking. Um, so you can go in and find room noise, um, and you can select that, and actually remove it. Um, so let me bring this up. So when you look at this, um, these bottom, these bottom sounds where it's really bright yellow, um, is all the core sounds. And then as you get higher into the more purple, it gets to the higher pitches and the more like background noise. Um, but on this far left, you can see when I highlight this, all this is just room noise. You know, there's almost no yellow because it's just it's straight background noise. So you can select that and you can capture that. Uh, pocket of noise. And then if I select the whole clip and go to noise reduction, um, I can apply that. If it'll do it right. Technical difficulties. 
and then it removes that. So if you see, everything that was purple on the left is now black, and it's removed that throughout the clip. Um, so, for example, here is this clip. I'm going to play that room noise. Oh, say can you see? So once you've gone through that process and removed the background noise, um, this file now sounds like you're in a silent recording studio. Listen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. And being able to do this has saved us so many times. Um, now, to move on to the next thing, when you do this, um, you get a rather empty feel, because when you're in your room, there's a lot of reverberation. So to remove that reverberation makes you sound like you're in a tiny box. Um, so the next thing we can do is add reverb. So give me a second, I've got to remove the background noise from everything. So once I've removed the sound, the next thing that I go and do is I add reverb to make it sound like we're in a bigger room. So I've already done that to these tracks, but let me click on them just to show you. So this is a reverb panel. Um, so when you go in here, um, it has the presets, which my preset I like using is you go to Auditorium, um, and then you go into Impulse, which is just a more um, precise preset, I guess. And I go into the key Cathedral. The reason why is it has long response with a slow decay, so it makes you seem like you're in a really big room. So let me show you um, without without reverb, uh, this is what this track sounds like. Oh, say can you see? So now I'm going to turn reverb on, and I want you to hear how it makes you sound like you're in a cathedral, honestly. Oh, say can you see? By the dawn's early light. It's, it's kind of subtle, but you can hear after you get done with the note, it kind of just rings. And I, I just really like how that sounds. So I go and put that effect on every single track after I've removed the sound from every single track. And then this is what it ends up with. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. All right, so at this point, a small note, and this is something that I used to forget a lot, is when you're recording, a lot of times I stop the recording with the space bar because it's a big button, it's easy to push, instead of trying to find the record button. But with that, the mouse, the uh, space bar makes noise, you know, and this picks it up. So at the end of every clip, I have learned to go in and you just grab it and move it back the slightest bit and it just completely takes that away. So just note self you're doing recording. Um, small stuff matters. Alright, so probably one of the most entertaining abilities that we have through this is autotune, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard of autotune. Um, but just to show you what exactly it can do as I said, I would talk about this fifth clip later down here, which is the low bass. Um, and right now, it's not really a low bass. If I go to the bass line and play the bass part, you know, it's that note. And the bass part right now, or the low bass part, is the same note. You know, what I want to do is take it down an octave, because octaves are fun. So in order to do that, you open up the file, which by double clicking on it, you go into your effects, you go down to time and pitch, go to manual pitch correction, and then if you see here, uh, these green lines are just showing the, the pitches that are going on. So this lowest note is showing somewhere around uh, low E, so E2. Um, so if we pull this down, this line across the middle is is the note that I sang. Not specifically the pitch, but just that is um, in tune with what I was singing. So if you see right here, you see the decibel level lines again, which is the note, so if we play it, that's the low E or whatever I was singing. So if you want to take this down, you grab this line and pull. And as you can see, it's going down in cents. The farthest I can go is 500 cents. So with a half step being 100 cents, then you do math, you want to go down an octave, that's 12 steps, you go down 1,200 cents. So we're going to take this down another 500 and apply that. And then 
if we take this down another 200 cents, we should be there. So let's go down to 200. Oh, hey, look there. We got it. All right, let's apply that, and let's see if math works. So let's go back to the bass part and listen to the note it sang. And let's see if we got an octave here. <laughs> I think that's an octave. So, I don't auto-tune like that in music. I would much rather prefer to just sing live and sing it plain. Um, but just to show you the extent of what we can do. Um, in, in some songs we do auto-tune, especially if I've recorded with someone and then you know, I come home and I don't have a time to meet with them again, then I'll tweak you know, a, few, a few notes, but nothing that ridiculous. But for the fun of it, let's just listen to what it sounds like. And I'll turn this up so that we can all enjoy subwoofers. O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Wonderful. <laughs> so, that is a very quick uh, run through of what we do. If you have any questions, always leave a comment below. Um, Andrew, enjoy editing this, and we will see you in two weeks. Have a good weekend.